Okay, you give me one. Okay, try another one. Uh, L and M. L and M. Ah, uh, L and M. Lincoln. Lincoln and something. Lincoln, Lincoln and, uh, and Nebraska. Louisville and Nashville. Uh, What's the trouble with you kids today? You never rode a freight car. Train? I never even saw a train. You know, until I had my uh, motorcycle, I used to hitch when I wanted to get somewhere. Oh. Well, what are you two looking at? The animals in the zoo, or uh, did you come to give me a complete physical examination? Oh, well, I think a complete mental examination would be more in order. Oh, you think I'm off my rocker? Not at all. I think you're about as dumb as a fox. Well, thank you, brother. That makes me feel real nice and warm inside. I wonder if you would mind explaining something. Well, I might. But uh, go ahead anyway. All right, you said that you would... Well, you wanted to get out of town just as quickly as possible. You were emphatic about it. Mm-hmm. So? Now we hear you're not. That's so. That's so. What the hell is going on? Scotty, he scared me. What's the matter? What's wrong? Anthony Hand's in there waiting for you. So, will you have the scissors? You bet. After that stunt they pulled on you, I'm not taking any chances. Wait, Scotty. What for? I just told you Hand's in there waiting for you. You want some protection? I've got two good fists, Heather. And the way I feel right now, I'm gonna tear them apart. You're making a big mistake, Mrs. Bolden. You really ought to listen to me. Look, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to call the police right now. Maybe you didn't hear me right. I said I've got information that will ruin the quarter mains. And I said I want you out of here right now. You don't want to hear about the quarter mains, you're sure? Not from the likes of you, I don't know. Uh, you'll be sorry you didn't listen to me. Listen, if you want a handout or something, go down to the mission by the waterfront, all right? But don't come bothering me again. Well, if that's what you want. But I could really blow the whole Quartermain family sky high. Sure you could. It's the truth. Every time a Quartermain blows his nose, it's in the society pages of the paper, and you're telling me you have news about them? Go on, now, get out of here. Now! You'll be sorry. Out! Sorry, Doctor. Uh, I thought it was somebody else. God, you seem uh, awfully upset. No, it's, it's all right. There's this crazy old man, and he was after my money or something. I had to throw him out, and when I heard you ring, I, I thought it was him back again. Well, I still don't look so good. Oh, okay. Take your blood pressure. Oh, I feel fine. Well, really. fine. Just let me be the judge of that. Hello, Susan. Just because you're home again doesn't mean that you're completely recovered. Mm -hmm. I hope you understand that. I told you when you came home, you're going to have to take a very long rest. And I mean a very long rest. Is it OK? What? That stomach is higher than I hoped. That's for sure. Well, you know, it's probably just because of that stupid old man. I just got but excited, that's perhaps, all. Perhaps, but any stressful situation can be very dangerous for you. You have to stay calm. I will. And do as little as you can. Okay. Where's your, where's your Aunt Alice? Isn't she uh, here with you? Oh, well, she comes, but I, I told her to leave. She means well, but she really gets on my nerves, Doctor. What about Georgia? Isn't she working here? Yeah, today's her day off, so I, I told her I'd be fine. She'll be here the whole rest of the week. 
And your boy? Isn't anybody here to take care of him? I'm hiring a housekeeper to come in by the day and help out. Oh, well, that's a relief. But on my way to the hospital, I just uh, had a hunch to come here and check on you. I'm certainly glad I did. Well, it was very thoughtful of you, but, Doctor, I assure you it wasn't necessary. I feel just fine. Well, we'll determine your condition after I examine you. Well, you just checked my blood pressure. I know, but I want to give you a full examination now. You need care, Susan. You are still not completely well. Okay. Oh, man, come on, you got the message? I'd have to pound it into your face. Listen to me, Baldwin. <laughs> man, you... I'm gonna smash you up good. You got that? Do your hand. Let go of me, and I'll explain. All right, man. All right, I'm listening. I give you my word, Baldwin. I didn't set you up. I don't know anything about it. Somebody fingered me. Man, I want to know who it was or I'm going to smash your face and you, you got that... You gotta believe me, Baldwin. I didn't even know you were attacked. Then answer my question, Han. Who set me up? It must have been Largo. But it was your idea, wasn't it? No, I told you before. He thinks you're holding out on him. He's sure that you're stalling to ace us out of the whole setup. You know better than that? Yeah, maybe. But Largo doesn't. He's not the kind of guy you mess around with. He plays rough and he plays for keeps. Okay, man. Well, he's got it wrong and somebody's got to straighten him out. How? You tell him the truth. I'm not stalling on this small deal. I just don't happen to have the financing right now. You won't believe it. Well, it's the truth. Man, come on. I promised you and your boys concessions in the mall, right? I'm not going to renege on that promise. But I just don't happen to have the financing, and sending those bozos to beat me up doesn't help matters any. You got that? Listen, Largo's going to ask me questions. What do I tell him? You tell him the truth. You tell him that I need more time. Well, maybe he won't buy that. Well, then you go and convince him, right? I can't do that. You know what? I'm starting to get the picture here. You're scared of Largo, aren't you? I'm not scared of anybody. Yeah, you are, Hand. You're starting to sweat just thinking about having to face Largo. You haven't got it anymore. What are you talking about? The big Anthony Hand. Big man on the waterfront with all the influence. You've got about as much influence as a little schoolboy. Yeah, if you'd come through the way you say you would, I wouldn't have a problem. Not with Largo, not with anyone. Look, you go back and you tell him that I need more time. That's not easy to tell him. You do it! We see, I owe the both of you an awful lot. For what? Well, that doctor you sent here to see me. I mean, what was she, a, a shrink? If you're talking about Gail Baldwin, she's a member of the staff here, and she's eminently qualified. Oh, well, I could see that right away, yeah. As a matter of fact, she wanted to help me get a job in another town. Did you accept her offer? Well, see, I was going to, but uh, then I thought about it, and I figured how much I'd rather stay here in Port Charles. I mean, you can understand why, can't you? No, I cannot. Why on earth would you want to stay here in Port Charles? Well, to be close to my family, brother. <laughs> it's very cute. Of course he wants to stay here and be close to his family. We know why, don't we? Let me tell you something when you refer to our family. Our family has an awful lot of power in Port Charles, and we will never hesitate to use it if we have to. Oh, that's that. Well, see, I don't get it. See, now you threaten me. What can a little guy like me do against the almighty Quartermains? I mean, what are you guys scared of? Quartermains are never scared. Not of you, not of anybody. Good. See, I don't scare easy either. And I'll tell you something else about me. I don't like to be pushed around. See, it makes me mad. Real mad. So what do you intend to do about it? What I usually do when I uh, get between a rock and a hard place. What? Stay put. Yes, sir, I stay right. Where I am. Okay, come on, let's go. We're not getting anywhere here. Oh, leaving already? And I was just beginning to enjoy this little family get-together. Um, come on. Let's go. You two come back real soon. My door's always open to the Quartermains. Are you really thinking of staying here in Port Charles? No, no way. The Quartermains aren't my idea of a family to come home to. You really had them going. 
Yeah, well, I enjoy needling them. Well, they were really squirming. Yeah, and I enjoy watching them. <laughs> Good for you. Just keep it up. I tell you, they give me a hard time. I don't mind giving it back to them. Need any help? No, no, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm supposed to be walking around. Well, it's supposed to help you get your strength back, but still, you're not supposed to overdo it, you know. Well, I won't. But, you know, it feels great being up. Well, I'm sure, but still, you should sit down and rest for a little bit, you know, over here in the lounge, and then get up and try another walk in a little while. You're, uh, Amy, right? That's right. Why don't you go over here and sit down for a couple minutes? Sure. You know, you girls are really an angel of mercy. I mean, isn't that what they call you? Uh, well, some people do, and then there have been patients that have had other names for us. <laughs> no, I don't believe that. A pretty girl like you? I'm sure you say that to all the nurses. All the ones I've uh, seen. Hey, how you doing, hon? Come on, sit down. I went to your room to see you, but your bed was empty. So I thought maybe that you checked out without saying goodbye. Oh, now I wouldn't do that. You know, just this morning I was thinking, you know, I was saying to myself, what am I going to do without you girls? I'm sure you'll manage. <laughs> oh, I bet you've got a dozen girls back home, haven't you? No, you know, as a matter of fact, I don't. I spend all my spare time reading books in the library. Oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, really, really. I mean, uh, I just don't have any time for girls. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. What kind of books? Well, big, big, thick ones. I mean, the kind they're just heavy holding them up. I don't believe it. <laughs> if you don't mind, ladies. Oh, uh, we were just keeping Jimmy Lee company, Dr. Quartermain. So I see. Why are you out of bed? Uh, do you really care? It's a simple professional question. Why are you ambulatory? That means up and walking around. Yeah, well, I, I know that. I read that in one of those big books. If you're being professional, I thought you gave up my case. I did, but as it happens, Dr. Leslie Weber is out of town. I don't think she'd really want to see you walking around the halls. Well, you see, then you should have looked at my chart. Why? Because Dr. Weber wants me to walk around as much as possible. See, I'm going to be discharged in a few days, and walking around builds my strength. Any other suggestions? None. Excuse me? <laughs> I'm going down to the cafeteria to meet Monica and have some coffee if anybody needs me. I'll let you know if anything comes up. Thank you. It's this way, isn't it? You know, I, I think he had a real good idea. Who? The weird doctor. What, what's his name? Oh, come on. You know Alan Quartermain? Yeah, I do, but not as well as I'm going to. Listen, but going to have coffee is a good idea. Why don't we, uh, why don't you listen to my plan, okay? Uh, why don't you get permission if you need to? And uh, we'll go down to the cafeteria, and uh, I'll flip you girls for the tab for the coffee. <laughs> uh. Uh. Jesse, would it be okay if we went on our break now? If you don't forget to come back. Try not to. Okay, I'll race you to the elevator. Are you sure you're well enough to go for coffee in the cafeteria? I'm just being around pretty girls like you. Build my strength up in leaps and bounds. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you promise, Susan, you're going to stick to the regimen I prescribed? That means plenty of rest, and above all, no stress and no excitement. Doctor, I keep telling you I feel just fine. Well, I'm glad to hear that, but the examination shows that you're not completely recovered. Well, you're going to take it easy, young lady. I promise you. Are you going to have another relapse? I Is that quite clear? I promise you, you I promise? will do everything that I promise. All right, fine. Okay. Stay on the medication. I want to see you once a week. Yes, sir. And if anything goes wrong, don't hesitate to call. I mean, headache, anything. I right? will. I'll be fine. Of course you will. If you listen to me. <sighs> Doctor, thank you. I, I appreciate you coming over. I really do. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Okay. All right, there's nothing to get excited about. Well, how did you get in here? Through the back door. It was locked. Not to me, it wasn't. I've had a little experience with locked doors. What do you want? 
I'm calling the police. That wouldn't be very sensible. Well, then will you please leave? I am not going to bother you, I promise, and I said that. Now, I didn't come here to hurt you. Well, why are you here? What do you want? I just want you to listen. No. Is that so much to ask? Just listen? Please just leave me alone. I can't do that. Not until you've heard everything I have to say. Look, I'm not supposed to get excited, all right? And you're frightening me. I don't mean to. Now, will you please listen? Why should I listen? I don't even know who you are. I've waited for a long time to get what's coming to me. A very long time. So, make up your mind to something. To what? Nothing is going to stop me now. Of course, Jeff sends his love to everybody, but the best part was seeing how well he's recovered. I'm sure that's a great relief, mm. Steve. It certainly was. We've been phoning his doctors practically every day, but seeing uh, his progress for myself, well, it was very reassuring, believe me. Well, the trip certainly seems to have done you an awful lot of good. <laughs> he does look wonderful, doesn't he? Oh, yes, you. he does. Monica and I were going to have a few days oh, as soon as we could get away. Uh, okay. Uh, Hello. Yeah. Uh, Hello, Anne. You, uh, you're taking your break? Mm-hmm. And it's been so much fun. Jimmy Lee's been keeping us in stitches. Has he really? Mm-hmm. All the nurses just adore him, Alan. Thank oh, you. nice. The funny thing is, though, I'll tell you, you two do not look the least little bit alike. He must take after his mother's side of the family. I wouldn't know. But I'll tell you one thing. There is something about his personality. He yeah. is definitely a quarter mate. Yeah. I mean, I could tell right off. I'm sorry, but I'm confused. Who are we talking about? Ah, uh, Steve, it's a long story. I'll explain it later. Well, if you'll excuse me, yeah. I got stuck buying coffee. Bye. Mm -hmm. Well, who was she talking about? That young man? Mm -hmm. He's a patient. I assume that, Audrey, but what was she talking about? <laughs> His personality is definitely quarter me. What the heck does that mean? Darling, I told you. I'll explain it all oh, later. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Don't you think maybe you should get back to your office? Didn't you tell me that you have a mountain of work? Yes, I certainly do. I certainly do. Well, we'll see you two later. Yes, sir. Excuse us. You know, most of the time, Amy says something to me. I have no idea what she means. Oh, come on, you two. I can step back to your office. Now you're starting the party without me. Thank you. Yeah. Don't say anything I know. And do something about it. What am I supposed to do about it? I don't know. I do know one thing. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life being humiliated because I'm married to a quarter me. That's not fair, Monica. But it's true. We just get over one whole big deal with one quarter main air and another one pops up. Just to humiliate our lives. Now, you have to do something to stop it. And I mean stop it. I agree. But what and how? <laughs> Bottom line is I've got to get that money out of Jason's trust. That's the only way out. I'm in this jam. Scotty, Susan's never going to consent to that. But she has to. Damn it, this is a good deal. If she gave me half the money, the kid would make a fortune. But can you make her believe that? No, no, she won't even listen to me. She just wants to see the potential here. Well, that's my cousin Susan for you. She can't see anything beyond herself. Did you talk to Largo? I did. What did he say? Where do you want me to begin? Look, am I going to get the time or aren't I? Well, that's the simple part. You can have all the time in the world. Largo said that? Sure. He understands you can't raise the money to build the mall. So he said you not to worry about it. Well, that's a relief. Only there's a whole lot more to it, isn't there? You hit it right on the nose, Heather. There's more. What? Well, since you can't raise the money for the mall, he's going to come up with it himself. He's going to use his own funds. Oh, I see. So we're going to be in partnership then. Wrong. He's taken over. I mean, he's taken over. He can't do that. Largo can do just about anything he wants. You see, he figures the mob was counting on your clean money to build the mall, right? Right. All right. So now he figures you can't raise it. So he doesn't need you anymore. So he's going to get rid of Scotty. Scotty's out on his ear. I couldn't have said it better no, myself. No, wait a minute, man. He can't do that, you see? This is my idea. I put the whole thing together. And now you can't deliver. All right, look. And you go back to Largo and you tell him that he just isn't going to dump me out like that. You, you tell him that. You wouldn't ask me to do that if you knew him as well as I did. Now, you made some promises, Baldwin. You didn't keep them. Largo didn't take that from anyone. But won't you at least talk to him? Why should I? I'm not going to take the fall for you. I'm on shaky ground with Largo myself. If I were you, 
I just accept the situation. Game's over, Hotshot. No, the game is not over. You go back and you tell Larko this. You tell him that if I can come up with the money by the end of the week, we still have a deal. You're talking about a couple of days. Will you go and tell him that, Hand? All right, he can be reasonable sometimes. He might go for a couple of days. Good. Go call him now, please. You, uh... You realize you're making another promise. I know what I'm doing, okay? Well, all I gotta say is... God help you if you don't keep it, Baldwin. Scotty. Do I even need to ask I you I know what I said, Heather. I gotta come up with the money. I heard you. The question is how? Well, there's just one way. Susan's gotta listen to me. No way, Scotty. She's not gonna do that. Yeah, well, she has to do that. She's gotta understand that this is a good investment for Jason. But she doesn't believe it. Well, she's got to believe it. Because right now, Heather, that is my only chance. Just let me tell you what I have to say, and you'll find I mean you no harm. As a matter of fact, what I have to say will help you. I don't need any help. And especially not from somebody like you who barges into my house and refuses to leave. I apologize for that. But what I have to say is worth it. Now, will you, won't you please listen to me? All right. I'll listen to you, but make it fast because I can still call the police. When I'm through, you won't want to do that. Well, go on. I said I'd listen. It's about the Quartermains. What about them? Your son, Jason. Isn't that his name? Yes. He's Alan Quartermain's illegitimate child. That right? That's really none of your business. Susan, I may call you Susan, I hope. Susan, I have made it my business. The Quartermains are the reason I'm here. Go on. Did you know that all the Quartermain heirs are in the same position as your son? What do you mean? There are no legitimate heirs to the Quartermain money, not a one. All the claims to that money would be fraudulent. That's absurd. Alan is a Quartermain, so is his sister Tracy. I know the family, Susan. There's also Alan's son, Alan Jr. That's right. I repeat, not one of them has a claim to the Quartermain money. Why not? Because both Alan and his sister are illegitimate, just as illegitimate as your son, Jason. That's the most ridiculous story I've ever heard in my life. Who sent you over here to talk to me? Oh, wait a minute. It had to be Heather. It was, wasn't it? Another one of her stupid, crazy ideas. Coming here was entirely my idea. Why? I thought that would be obvious. We... we both have a score to settle with the Quartermains. And I think we can do it together. Alan and Tracy? Illegitimate? It just can't be. That can't be true. But it is true, I'm telling you. Now think a minute, Susan. Think what power you'd have over the quarter mains if you knew their rotten little secret. But it isn't true. Believe me, I know it is. How do you know? Because I am Lila Quartermain's husband. Her only true legal husband. Lila Quartermain is my wife. General Hospital will continue in a moment. <laughs> 